Amen. Good morning. Um, happy Valentine's Day. I know some will say it's not a, it's not a, oh yeah, happy love. <laughs> Can you celebrate somebody in the chat box? Just say happy Valentine. God bless you. Or can you not say happy Valentine? Just say God bless you, sister. So, so, so. God bless you, sister. So, so, so. Love you, sister. So, so, so. Bless you, sister. And let us celebrate and show ourselves love this morning. Happy Love's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Uh, thank God is um, love we're celebrating. So it's not a bad thing. So a love, whatever it is. So we celebrate everyone. Um, God bless you. Happy Valentine's Day. Love you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This morning, you know, I will come to my community to share and... Um, I want I want to ask a question. And I'm not trying to be controversial. I genuinely want to ask. I know it's your birthday, darling. I'm coming dear. <laughs> Since you already mentioned, happy birthday, sister day to, to can we wish I did Saturday to happy birthday? When I saw it, I'm like, ah, you are Sister Valentine. Wow, wow, wow. So it makes sense in the name of your business. Can we wish Sister Valentine? If she if, if we had Santa on Valentine's Day to be added to that would be doing Santa for us. God bless you, Daddy Tutu. Happy birthday. Yes, now I see cake raining down on you right now. Um, your praises will never um run short or run dry. God will strengthen you. God will uphold you. In the name of Jesus. Happy birthday. We love you. I was gonna ask a question. How do you think? You know what? Let's just go there. Let's go to the scripture. I want to let somebody know that you are very much loved by God. Um, I was something yesterday. I was just appreciating my husband. And somebody posted, um, pressure is getting worse. Something like, oh, wow, God bless you. Oh, my God, it's Valentine's Day. I'm like, first, believers, let's try not to post those kind of things online. Okay? That post right there, that comment is not going to bring demand close. It can't make people be cautious of or feel guilty for celebrating their spouse because of how you feel. So I said, with pressure, I want you to, but you know, God is, I'm really, you know, I'm looking for the best way to say, it. no, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be. That's not the intent of today. But, anyways, so I want to speak to all the single people or people that are even in a relationship. Perhaps you cannot even get any, please, no pressure. Please manage what you look at today, even married people, because that's when you see somebody husband have bought a whole nation for them or somebody's wife have a, a you know open bank for them and then at that point you begin to feel funny so please i beg you in the name of god control what you see control what's on your mind you don't have to expose yourself that much or put yourself in that vulnerable position and begin to know you just don't over i can handle it i remember when Concerning people were getting engaged, I reached out to someone of my very good friends and I told her, Don't hope we are not watching anything. And rightfully so, she was feeling in a certain way, also because it was loud. Okay, no pressure, please. We love and exactly this is will end. And guess what? The pressure of loneliness or non loneliness or loving and value does not end with being married. Because even in marriage is work, you have to continue to. So my people, please, I want to encourage you. If you don't have any plans for your spouse today, can you write them a letter? Can you show them love? You say, I show them love all the time. No problem, but it's great. Like my family is not a do or die, but I realize that why don't I also keep, if I show love on a regular basis, why should I say on this day? Because I'm not part of it. I don't believe. Do something. Send a note. Buy a cookie, a special meal. Send a message. Just try and do something. Don't let us get to the point where we now. I beg, I married you. For those days, when you're married, you know that you send. <laughs> you are very conscious to send those things. If you are in school, if you are a student, you do not be discouraged by the number of gifts that will be coming in and out of your room. And let me give us grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, I want to talk about the love of God. Well, I want to show us something in scripture and then ask us what we think. Ah, guys, it's the perfect love of God that casts out fear. 
there is the reverence of God that is needed. There is this idea of, oh, you really can love God and there's this idea of you can love God and not obey God. You can love God and not fear God. You can love, well, I think the truth is you love the idea of God and not fear God. There's that reverence of God that is needed, that fear of God that is needed to come into our hearts. That's what will keep you from doing certain things. However, Luke 15. You know, sometimes I go through life and I tell myself, you know, see, this is elder brother syndrome. And that is also, I must state here, both the religious spirits and the orphan, um, the religious spirits and the orphan spirits. No, there's another one. Both the religious spirits and the orphan spirits are all manifestations of an unhealthy art. They are all manifestations of an unhealthy art. So whether you have a religious spirit, oh, and I'll show you what religious spirit is. Um, Pastor, let me preach the sermon. I don't know if it's out now on Sunday. Let me go and check it. Sorry, once again, it's a process. Is 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 going on? I just thank God for, <laughs> you know, I used to tease him as Pastor Key. Bishop has a way of setting you straight. I don't think it's out yet. So once it's out, I would, I will share it with us maybe tomorrow. And it was just talking about love is patient. Love is patient. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like and and I love about it. Sometimes love is patient. You might you might move into seasons of your life. Um, you might you know shut the door, close the door, move on, do all those things. Yes, you might go to a place where you don't have the same level of access and all of that or conversation. But it doesn't mean. Love is patient. It doesn't mean you stop loving people. You might not have, you guys might not have access. You might not be, I call you, I really on the bed and all this kind of thing, but you can't stop loving. And that's the test of our heart, to be honest. But I want to read John 15, Luke 15. And I want to ask you, which of the sons are you? So let's read this point further. And I remember that God is talking about here, the kingdom, right? He said, Jesus told the story. A man asked the son. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth with, between his sons. That's Luke 15. I'm now verse 13. A few days later, his son packed all his belongings on, please note, moved to the distant land where he wasted all the money in his wife living. Wasted. About the time his money ran out, a great family swept the land and began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him and he sent him to the field to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry and even the poor was feeding. Even the that even the poor was feeding the pigs look look good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, somebody taking his senses, he said to himself, "At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. I'll go home to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Take me to your take me on as the hired servant." So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. He said, Father, I've sinned both against heaven and you. I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. It was not that it was not the fact the father, the job of the father was he stayed and he was ready. So for him to have seen the son running, I put the sermon on this. Let me get the link. Um, someone can help me get the link, the tale of two sons. Um, the father must have seen. The son, he, he, he ran to embrace him, but it was the job of the son. The Bible says the son came to his senses. So it was the son had to, you you get to a point in your life where you have to tell yourself, well, this is not working. I, told, I was sharing with somebody last year, and I said, sometimes you need to learn what to fight for. You need to learn what to fight for. There is no shame in fighting for what you believe is is. Is, tre- is of treasure to you. It could be relationship. It could be a promise of God over your life. It could even be your walk with God. You fight for it. You fight for it. Amen. So Alpha, a fight for me means going back, not going back, just saying, Lord, help me. He ran to his father and his father ran and said, and he said, Father, I've sinned both against heaven and you. I'm no longer going to have been called your son. It wasn't just remorseful. It wasn't sad. He repented. All right. So as far as I said, quickly, Father never, oh, he said, go and bring the finest robe in the house and put it on. Get a ring on for his finger and sandal for his feet and kill the calf we have been fat, fat, fattening. We celebrate. I don't know why I'm feeling so heavy on my heart right now. I don't know. There's just something. And I know it's both ways. God is speaking to me. And I feel that God is speaking to someone. Amen. He says, meanwhile, the son, okay, bring the calf. Um, because for this son of mine was dead, has now returned to life. He was lost and now he's found hope. So the party began. 
So number one, any sinner that comes to Christ, there's party. So if there's party for any sinner that comes to Christ, so it means that God is not rejoicing that they are awake. So your attitude to sinners, why we might condemn sin, why we might con con condemn an action, you can, your question, your love can never be in question. Of course, the world would, anybody that is speaking to that now, like they said that now, um, Church of England wants to, uh, Brazil Church now is thinking of changing God's uh, pronoun, I be mean, God's uh, whatever, to, what's the, 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 just one of those things that's really to appeal to people that are not, so that you don't feel bad that God is male. I mean, just crazy. However, my reality is this. As much as we're fighting this thing, these are people. Do you realize that these are human beings, that the devil is really controlling? We need to come into a place and begin to ask the Lord, how do we win these people that are daily fighting the issue of this homosexuality? How do we begin to cry to heaven? Number one. So I'm trying not to make this look like I'm trying to cast it. I've having conversations with people since Sunday about an issue that happened. And one of the things about how, you know, <sighs> Okay, let me not pray myself. Then, verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. So we've seen the father's reaction. Oh, dear, shall I? God is, you know, thank you. Confess your sins. You know, come back to your senses. The father is waiting for you. You know, one of the balance I love about this, it wasn't the father going on the field looking for the son because he has done everything he can to show the boy's love, even to giving him his freedom that he, he claimed he needed, which was not freedom. It was actually foolishness. He gave him whatever he needed. You know, take, you know, but the father kept waiting. So some of us, we need to come to that place where, where and God is far, God is quiet, he's, he's, he's waiting. The Bible says he's always knocking, right? You have to choose. There's a thing about your will. God will never bend your will. God will never force your will. So I'm careful of people that are trying to tamper with people's will. Even in how you're preaching the gospel, to be honest. Anyways, so meanwhile, the older son was in the field working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing. Maybe Baba is like, uh -uh, yesterday, nobody. And to be honest, can we be honest? How many of you have ever felt like the prodigal son, the elder brother? I am the one. I have felt that way. Like, uh -uh, I don't understand. I can never forget something happened to me last year. It was the most, I can't believe myself. When I was done thinking that thought, someone said someone said on Sunday. I think the Lord Spirit of God is one. Someone said a Sunday sermon in our church. Anyway, so one day, Thank you, Modukwe. I think it's just me and Modukwe. I have felt this way before. And I've had to caution myself because I'm like, and then I felt this way and I felt embarrassed for feeling this way. I felt so bad. I felt so, and I made it like, say, you know what, God, this is what I feel, Lord, help me. You are more than my feeling. All right. And I repented of that thought. Because <laughs> I saw something, I felt somebody didn't deserve it. I'm like, oh my God. We have been here since Jesus Christ. Ah, ah. I immediately, I confessed myself. I told my husband, I said, oh, indeed. I just thought about the most ridiculous. I don't want my friends. I'm always laughing. I said, because for me, I will never cover up sin. My mouth, no matter how heavy it is and how ashamed I am, I will, and I will write it. I will never, ever, 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 ever cover up my flesh or my sin. I'm exposing it as the thought is coming, as the funny feeling is coming. I feel something. I look as I will talk it. Anyways. So I did, and immediately I said, declaring, Lord, they deserve it, oh God. Lord, they are worthy of it, oh God. You are the one that, because I said, I want to use my mouth to disqualify myself. So, so God will bless me one day. Now, somebody that don't know my story probably will just see me and stumble on me and say, ah, this one just came from, because some people have said it before. Um, someone was in a meeting, and so I said, ah, that girl, she just came from nowhere. Ah, oh, girl, and the person was feeling bad. Look at that. Eh? No, I said, nowhere, kid. Do you know this girl's journey? I said, I mean, I've never, I've never, I've never been there yet. I'm still warming up. On the tarmac. So my point is, sometimes we are find ourselves this way. You are coming back. You are hearing music. Uh -uh. What is going on? You say you're, you you have thought that your father says proud of you. Your father says is yeah, my son has been watching. He's proud of you. He says your brother is back, and he was told your father has killed and fatted and the fatting cow. Maybe that guy's been eyeing that fatting cow. In fact, I'm saying the elder brother has been feeding that. He's the one supervising out that cow as a fattened. He said, we're celebrating because of his self-return. I don't understand. Did he go for excursion? Did he go for mission trip? Where did he, where did he go to that was celebrating? Celebrating what? Oh, Lord have mercy. The other brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. But he replied, oh, after all these years, I have sinned for you. Never for once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me one young goat for a feast. Am I speaking somebody? 
with my friend. Yeah, when your son of yours, this young of yours come back, I'm just squandering your money on prostitutes. We never have day here all this time. Exactly, Modupe. Spend all your money on prostitutes and you celebrate by killing the fatting calf. But I said to him, look, my dear son, you have always stayed here with me. And everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. But no, that God is a fair and just God. He didn't give the guy another, he didn't hear the story that God had told him that from your brother's inheritance. So, because at the end of the day, God is, he, the, you, you squander what you have, but there's come home, there's, there's blessing, there's mercy. Although, of course, the Lord will bless you and all of those things. But you can't take it with that. That guy's inheritance, the firstborn's inheritance, is, that's what God was saying. Uncle, did you understand that this is your inheritance? If you wanted to kill cow, see when you say, ah, let's kill cow for and stuff. I wanted to speak about this thing. One was a re rebellious son. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Both the rebellious son and the religious son are all, they are all pointers of an orphan spirit. That's what I want to say. Not the orphan spirit is an elderly art, but it's also an elderly art, art. Both the religious, whether you're the one that you're just doing, any, you're squandering all the things, throwing grace away, you're angry, and the one of you that you're still in touch. And so in your mind, you think that it's just your doing. And that is why someone give their life to that one day. How can that one be prophesying? However, I know that anybody that's given his life to Christ and is prophesying, that's the manifestation, that's the fun function of the gifting of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that fruit is automatic. That person needs to still go through the process. And I'll show you guys when I saw that Paul, Paul, after all the people just called Paul, Paul started preaching. Paul went away for years to be with God. And he came back and he brought his message to the church in Jerusalem. Peter and James, to say, I want to be sure that this thing I'm preaching is consistent with what you receive, that with the revelation of Christ. This morning, I want to say, do not be offended at God blessing people, people that you think they don't deserve it. At the same time, and that's why you should be gracious to people. Guys, this is, I'm telling you this with everything that is tricking my body. You know, I'm saying to somebody yesterday, I said, some people want the RPI. Ah, so you think it's way because you can just judge about how passionate I am and think that, no, I've heard the most ridiculous things from certain people and I've had to sit down there and just, and just still see them through the eyes of God. Someone said something to me recently that really touched my heart. The person is going through a very tough time. And he said, I felt like I disappointed you both. We said, the way you have been able to love me is like the people I hurt are the people loving me. And that has given me strength. And it was almost like, I can't believe it. And it's almost broken down. Now, does that mean that we didn't tell him the truth? Oh my God, we, I told him the truth. But in telling the truth, my love cannot be in question. So when you go about saying, I tell the truth, is who I am. I know, but... And when I say love being questioned, not because of people, because at the end of the day, when you will say, no matter how much you tell the truth, people that want to be offended will still be offended. People that will still call you out will still call you out. People that will still say things will still say things. However, in your heart, you know you did the best. And there can be a test. Like when they carry what you they can be, Christ can be, can be glorified in your life, in your words, in your deeds. This morning, are you a rebellious son or a religious son? And before we castigate the elder brother, a lot of us feel that way. Sometimes you look at the message of God and you're wondering, I don't understand. I heard a story one time. <clears throat> you know, hey God, I can't wait to share with you this just message. You know, it, it said, if God has been patient, God died. He said, while you're yesterday, sinner, Christ died for you. The way he brought that scripture to portray God, love is patient, blew my mind. Because we just quoted, while you're yesterday, sinner, God died for you. You know what that is? That's patience. Words, words you are yet in sin. God died, and that died for you was not a guarantee. It's hope that you will one day receive his love. He gave you his love way before you know you needed it. How many of us can be that patient? Patient with the people you lead. Patient with why you are in that very thing. Yeah, why you are a mess. Why you were, he said, no, no, why you were hoping to be saved from sin. Why you a sinner? No, why you sinned. You know, he said, why you sinned? You mean that it's not in nature. You made a mistake. When you say a sinner and a believer, there are two things. There are nature things. There are things of the nature. One is a sin. You the one is that why you are still in a sin nature. Not that you sin, no. Not a believer that made a mistake. You were still enjoying that sin. In fact, nothing was better. Christ died for you. And since then, 
the blood, you know what it means to say the blood is still speaking. The blood, is, God is still waiting, like this prodigal um, father. Is since in Anneva Penam, he's still waiting. God is still waiting for that person. Oh my God. If that man on the cross could still say to God, yeah, receive me, you know, oh, Madosh, you know what's funny? The guy, the thief on the cross, entered wherever paradise before even Peter that would die for Jesus. Before Paul that would be crucified. That guy, that's, see, I heard a message about taking responsibility that blew my mind in a wedding about how one of the things that granted that guy was he took responsibility. And that's why I want us to be, don't be ashamed. I messed up. I, no, 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 no. I, he said, God, he said, he told the other guy, what do you mean, see us? Because some of us, that's the attitude we go to God. And if you love me, and that's the attitude we throw to people. And if you love me, no, the guy took responsibility. I made a mistake. And that's one of the things that has helped our marriage. Everybody learning to take responsibility. I made a mistake. No, this one, I'm not trying to say I made a mistake, but you too, you should have. No, I made a mistake. I was wrong. This is bad. I betrayed your love. I eh, 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 nah, have mercy. If it's your week, I'm going to say that this very moment, meaning even God was still going down to Hades to go and get the key of life. He said, you, I won't, I won't put you on call waiting. I'm sending you straight. Straight. Why? Somebody repented. Somebody was not just remorseful. Somebody took responsibility and said, you know what? I am a sinner. I am worthy of death or Lord by your mercy. So if God did not say, you know what? You, oh, you have seen, you kill, you are a sinner. That's why they are killing you on this cross. How dare you talk to me like this? Me, I'm here for mission. So you that are a sinner, that you are on this cross. You know what? You're going to wait. Let all the people that have been following, all that gave up everything for me, that are going to die. Let Peter die first and go. Then you can No. This fact entry, it shows you the heart of God for sinners. It shows you the heart of God for even anybody on this cross that you have made a mistake. You've seen, you've, you've messed up. You're, some of you are so tired of yourself. I'm going to say, give grace. You know, I was, my, my, my bishop and I were going home. I said, this love is patient. It's also you being patient with yourself. And boy, I'm saying that to myself. Let me see, be patient with yourself. Some of us, and that's why you can't give patience to other people because you have to learn to be gracious even to yourself. The way you treat yourself, the way you speak to yourself. What are the words you are saying to yourself? And God, Give that guy access. Look at how God dealt with that. And look at how God is dealing with that son. So what does this do to you? Is it, That's why it's the nature of God. It's not going to be easy. And every moment if you're here, you feel like it's not fair. Everybody is, is getting ahead. Everybody that loves Jesus is, is just, is just eh, me, I, I've been serving. You know, people feel that way. You know, today, some are going to feel like I've, been, I've kept myself virgin. <laughs> Is it the message of God? Let me give you something. I, I, I mean, no. I heard of a family member like 16, that is pregnant or 16 or something. Which I'm honestly crazy, crazy story. And my mom, I was like, oh my God. That's, she was just, you know, she was just alarmed, like, God. Hey, real, like, God, you cannot see this, my other children. You cannot see these children. Eh? You know, see this was that trusting God for children that they have what it takes to even want to raise children. And you, and she was not questioning God. She was just like out of. She was like, ah, our marriage. Like I don't know how we put our marriage in English. This God that you cannot fathom. This God, eh? You will see people that some people that you know they have no business to giving birth to 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 ten children. They are married. They can't take care. Of, but that's the beauty about God. You know why? Nobody can take credit for salvation. Nobody can take credit. So you that you are not dealing with mental health, it's not just because you know how to have confession. It's the mercy and the grace of God. Yes, we thank God for all the, you know, I feel like we need to go back to preaching the gospel to let people know. The reason why some people cannot access this your salvation is because you, you have made the standard so high that they don't measure up. Like, ah, uh, it's just everything. It's because of the 10 days fasting. That's why you got married to the man of your dreams. It's because, uh, no, you sow seed. That's the only reason why. I, it's the mercy and the grace of God. It's the mercy and the grace of God. Why am I saying this? Even you be merciful to yourself. Sometimes the Lord said to me, it means see, I don't even, I don't, I don't judge you this way. Like, because if you know me, I'm a very 
with myself oh lord you know when we're doing the anniversary of of 365 app the lord said to me let me see i was going through pictures and i started i was just in awe i said lord we did this no we didn't know what the year was going to hold not because of anything just to, to bless people just to you know celebrate people and and great content how we did this god with the resources we found a way sha, maximizing the resources we have we could not do our why we're waiting to have our own big studio we shall connect mike to this one to this i saw something on trisha's page yesterday celebrating the wins your video was recommended some of us were too were so we're so used to blessing and i'm speaking of someone like myself that you're used to what's the next next you can't even sit down and say ah Wow, one year ago, now we have 526 people on the platform. Yes, there are many things that we have not yet mastered. Yes, we need more hands to be able to do some things. But Lord, thank you. We have been able to launch over 25 courses. Ah, Lord, thank you. People have connected to people on this platform. People have blessed people for people's reason. No, it's like, what's the next phase? What? And the Lord said, be merciful to yourself. Calm down. Who's yet sick? Wait. So I tell people that, yes. Why is it important to to because the flip side is what I said for that reason you don't do your analysis you don't you know no 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 I will do what I need to do work wise what do I need to do how am I going understand this is no either or you cannot be you don't you don't have to sacrifice effectiveness for gratitude or gratitude for you can be full of gratitude yet be very effective and thorough with your work be thorough with your business okay how much did you spend how much can we call in our cost of our our our, our apex how do how much do we call how much can how can we cut cost in our expense how can we cut, 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 cut costs with our cost of operations with our personnel how can we cut costs with how can i improve but yet you can still be gracious i say ah i need to improve oh this is not good though I, I've been on this level for five years. I've not, I, no, I need to improve. I have not finished reading a book in two years. No, 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 this is not good. You can tell yourself the truth because the problem is our generation feels like you can't be truthful. And that's why I love the story of the prodigal father and the son. The father didn't stop the boy and he wasn't going up and down doing uh, such me. Please, oh, my son, come back, I beg you. If you don't know that I love you, if you don't know that there was even a response in love, and I am, you can just be rest assured I'm waiting for you. All right? So you can be very effective, very you, you use. But when any analysis that is paralyzing, paralyzing, paralytic analysis is not of God. And the Lord said to me, Emisi, why don't you thank me? I was speaking to somebody yesterday. A very dear, ah, oh my God, that, that word. And I said, I miss my dad. My dad's birthday was on the ninth. And I've just, you know, I'm thankful to God, but I just realized that somewhere there's this nagging feeling a lot of things that I wish I, I was able to do more. I wish he was here, blah, blah, blah. And someone said, have you, I was like, have you even thanked God I was your dad? Have you even, have you even paused to thank God? I guess he's no longer, he's no longer here, but he's, he's still speaking because he gave birth to you. Your father gave you a voice. I don't have this testimony. Um, I don't, I, I don't have any experience because of my dad. So my point is that that thing that you are still, complain about oh you know a lot of people feel that because they are single and they are virgins god should be giving them everything they ask for i see your virginity is you are, you are doing god a favor so people feel like you know i've kept myself so why is the husband and then somebody and i'm not saying this to judge anybody make anybody uncomfortable we all get you this sometimes you as a single person you are the one that is rebellious and religious are you, are you aware sometimes you're the one that is disobeying god and sometimes you're the one that is religious i swear we get to heaven we'll be very shocked so you have to learn to look at people through the eyes of God. I remember, this is my own take. Then to when I see some celebrities, my eyes, I'm rolling my eyes. I'm like, God, God, God save them. What said to me? Missy, you didn't create anybody. So you have no right. No, absolutely no. Is that, is that of this energy of God? Wow. Can you turn it to prayer? Have you, can you see that that's a soul? The Bible says it does not, it does not please God that any soul perish. So you cannot be rejoicing that somebody's in dark, that somebody's in um, evil. If God if they are giving their soul to the spirit of perdition, no problem. No problem, oh, but I cannot be rejoicing that a soul is doomed and going to hell. In, in no, mat, no, no matter the way I want to preach it. Have you not noticed how many people that they use fear to preach to you? How many of you give your life to Christ because they say you go to hell? 
How is that going for you? Did you grow deeper with God because of the consciousness of hell? So I'm a for the let's preach the full message of Christ. There's hell, there's evil. If you there, there's, there's sin, there's consequences, but there is grace. There is grace that you can see. We can't be more. I said, if God is patiently waiting for people to come to Christ, why are you the one that you are running? You are the one that you are impatient, that you are the one that you are angry and want to shut the door. When the father's arms are open, why are you the one saying that it's too late to come in? The same way, some of us, the reason why we don't keep going back to God is because you feel like God is tired of hearing that same thing. It's not. I love Mojo when I say something. God will walk with you. It's not. But that's why there's a balance. When you say grace, sin, grace abounds, so sin should continue. No. Because you must get to a point where you don't want to hurt your father. So be gracious to yourself. Today is the Valentine. Give yourself a gift. And I'm saying that to myself too. A gift of gratitude. I learned this from Genesis 1. Everything God created, he validated. Everything God created, he validated. He got to your point that you are very good. When last did you tell yourself, ah, well done. This area, you work on it, but don't worry, well done. So today, celebrate progress, not just a call for perfection. Celebrate. Some of us are so obsessed with perfection. And sometimes the idea that perfects you is still ego and pride. It has nothing to do with God. Sometimes I also see that to make you it's just to feel that hair. Yes. So somewhere you think you are you are you are worthy. Something you have done is what has made you, is what is making this is what's making that blood. A lot of us are dealing with self-righteousness and we have no idea. So, yes, by all means, pursue progress, pursue perfection in Christ, but no, it will never be by your effort. So, does that mean that we should not be able to tell ourselves the truth? The problem is. Love is any love that does not correct. Hebrews 13. You know, my point is, some of us feel like, when you say preach love, you feel like yeah, it's, 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 it's shallow. It's not deep enough. Because if you know, preach judgment. It's love. Because how, with how much John the Baptist was shouting, how many people came to, how many people then repented to the point of, how come, if John the Baptist was enough, Jesus didn't need to come. So he called for repentance. Then Jesus came and revealed the Father. Why am I saying this, guys? Do you know that even as people, even this dressing of, the dressing, somebody posted, ah, it's, it's sad. I'm praying. I'm, I said praying for them. I said, God, please help us. That we really don't need to see the breast. And you see to the point of where your pants is. That we don't need to see these things. Help us. Eh? Help us. Some of us are following believers that we have to, for the sake of God, just either hide their pain because Hey, Jineke, Lord, help. So while I keep teaching it, I'll teach moderation. I will encourage people that, that are, that, you know, spiritual siblings, mentors, mentees, whatever. Please, I beg you in the name of God. But I will not at that point, then, I, I, how will I put it? I will not at that point, then begin to, you begin to disgust me. I can't, instead, let it push me to the place of prayer. I can't get angry. But you see, that issue of get angry, not seen is a very dicey one. Because for you to get angry and not seen, you must really have a sense of, of, of con- emotional intelligence and the spirit of God controlling you seriously not to enter the place of sin. Why did I bring that up? Some of us, the passion we have to see certain changes has created disgust and anger towards the very people that maybe that anger was to push you to the place of intercession. Maybe that feeling was to go on your knees and cry. I said, God, help this soul. And that's where I'm like, God, help us. So like I will say, speak the truth. Embrace the truth. That's another message. You have to have the yes for the truth. No matter how much it pierces you. However, never be in doubt of God's love. Be gracious to yourself. Be patient with yourself. Some of us just want, God, fix me, fix me, fix me. Because I be patient with yourself. So that you'll be able to help somebody else. That's the only thing that people tell me. I'll just walk with them. Because guess what? I know what it is like. Sometimes to try so hard. To want to see that you have overcome a thing. Or you, you, are, you are growing. And you see, see, some, you see your withered hands. Like what Apostle Femi would say. That withered hands. You see that withered hands. And you are, you are, you're so ashamed of it. 
And I want to pray for people this morning for the grace to be gracious to themselves, grace to be patient with themselves, grace to forgive themselves. Some of you think you are forgiving yourself. No, what you did is you swept the issue under the carpet. You just want to delete the file. No, deleting file without forgiving yourself is, 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 is setting yourself up for triggers in the future. Setting yourself up for triggers that will come with tons and ons to come and meet you and begin to ask you questions. So do you want to bring out and say, Lord, this happened. Help me forgive myself. Help me to forgive myself, love myself, and treat myself as one that's been forgiven. In the name of Jesus. And for those that are rebellious or fighting or running away from God, I pray that the Lord will give you grace to come to your senses and come back to God. There's always home for you. Okay, we're sharing a testimony in church on Sunday. I can give you that part. Let me get the link of that part. Okay, we're sharing a testimony on Sunday. And I'm saying, at what point, there are people that are still being abused. There are still people that are still... And the reason why she said, yeah, the reason why some people cannot speak is shame. It's shame. You cannot make rubbish of shame, even as a culture where people can come in and say, I just fornicated. And they can come in tears and run to your hands. Elvis said something to me yesterday. She said, P.I., I read in scripture, you know, I saw that movie chosen how Jesus hugged a, a, lepros, a, a man dealing with leprosy. He said, can I do that today? We need to, we need to keep, can we come to that point? Yes, thank you so much, Uluwale. That's the panel. And hear people's story and how God saves and how God redeems. We will not lower the standard to make you comfortable, no, or you will never be questioned. Our love, the Bible says, this is how they will know you are my servant, that you love one another. Meaning, your love can become so loud and so real. And people might not agree with you. I don't agree. See this, but you can't question the love. Boy, sha, 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 she, she, she loves her. They were angry with Jesus for his message, but nobody was angry with Jesus that he loved. Oh my God. Nobody fought Jesus that eh, eh. He, he, the, the fight they had with him was the audacity to show everybody love. The fight they had with Jesus was his message. But nobody came out to say, even the Pharisees, you see, the fight they're fighting is that how can you, how can you, you are with these people, you are with that people. He was not a, nobody was saying that no, don't follow that man, it's mean. Don't follow that man, he doesn't even care. Don't follow that man, he doesn't love. Nobody could question the heart of God for the people. And that is the place we need to come to. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be you dying, keeping your opinion to yourself sometimes. You weeping. And this is also to your spouse, to your children, to your loved one. But there's a place. The prodigal son will never have been restored if he didn't go back. So there's a part of your restoration. I don't know what this is for. There's a part of your restoration that is, is connected to restitution. There's a part of your restoration, um, restoration that is connected to your repentance. Not just remorse. Don't just be. See, the prodigal son was remorse. That's why he stayed where he was. He was beating himself. Even the servants in my father's house were better off. He was beating himself. But he didn't find the rest restoration by just beating himself. He ran back to his father. Somebody needs to run back to their father, to their heavenly father, to their maybe their maybe their people, your siblings, your he ran back to his father. And then they found restitution. And the Lord will give us grace in Jesus. You might say, but P.I., some of these people have shut the door, then that's fine. You've gone back to say, and they've shut the door, they've cheated, that's fine, that's okay. You've done your bits and leave it to God. And the Lord will strengthen us in Jesus. And Lord, I pray, help everybody come to the place, one, that will be merciful to ourselves. I don't know who you are. Sometimes why you, you fight... Mm. I don't know. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't know who you are, where it feels like you've it's back to back. You've been getting, it's like God is just exposing things back to back, showing you things, and it's making you feel very unworthy. Can I invite you to come to the end of yourself and just accept that God does not reveal to shame. He reveals to heal. And I know what it's like where you think, ah, I thought that I was great. And in this place, and all of a sudden, it's like back to back. I'm seeing scripture. I'm saying, hey, Bishop was preaching on Sunday. I saw, so I say, hey, and I'm like, God, 
But what I will not do is to take it to mean that God doesn't love me. It's because of love. Hebrews 13 says, it's only an illegitimate child the Lord doesn't correct. I pray for in the name of Jesus, you will find strength to know that you are loved. You can reach out to any of the IRA leaders or anyone and just say, you know what, pray with me, encourage me. I pray that the devil will not hijack what God is doing in your life and introduce lies, defeat, condemnation. I don't know who you are. I think you fell sexually on Valentine's Day and this day has plagued you. It's nothing good. February is even a terrible month for you because of the sexual sin. I pray that you'll find grace, that God loves you so much. You see, you are running from the very one that can deliver you and is willing to set you free. And there are, there are people we, that, are, that won't judge you but will take you in, teach you the truth and walk with you. But don't get it twisted. The truth will pierce you most times. That's the essence. It will pierce you first. Then it will begin to comfort you. It will come in first. Your flesh is it's not you. It's, it's your flesh that is reacting because it's like light is coming. You know when you are sleeping in the dark? Have you ever been sleeping and they just switch on the light? What happens? You squint your eye. You are, oh my God, I want to cover yourself. That's what is happening to somebody. Light is coming into your life. And all of a sudden, you're, it's not because you don't want it. Your flesh is reacting. The light is coming. It's like, you just switch on the light like that. All of a sudden, you want to cover your face, your hand. You are uncomfortable. Oh my God, oh my God. God is saying to you, let the light do his work. And receive strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, deliver us from every orphan spirit. Anybody struggling here with a really rebellious spirit or religious spirit, deliver us and give us a heart after yours. A heart to love people, a heart to forgive ourselves, and a heart to obey you so we don't fall into the rebellious angle. Thank you, Lord, for today. It should be a great day for everyone to love themselves, to be patient, and to celebrate growth in, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give you this assignment. List five things you're grateful for in your life. Five areas of growth that you have noticed in your life in the last one year. Just listen to them and thank God for it. Genuinely, today. Thank God for it. I'm going to do the same myself. God bless you. And I'll see you again. Remember, you can use this link to join all the watches and um, the 9 p.m. watches on my page. If you can join, that would be great. Um, when friends praise on Sunday, we're really trusting the Lord for a great time in his presence. God bless you and have a great day.